there are two wrenches there which are banging on each other and creating noise and that annoys me. Hello everybody, welcome to the Growth Beyond Measure podcast, also known as The Cancer. Today we are going to be making some chain rings. like these because I am recording this after I have machined all three of these and without making it longer than it needs to be let's go through all the features and what I need to do to finish them off because they are essentially straight from uh, the router so let's get on with it let's first check whether the microphone is actually working let's go through all the features of this product so this is the big ring, this is the middle ring, this is the small ring. From the looks of it you can see that this is a narrow range triple, which I virtues of I have been phoning over some time ago. By some I mean like a year ago with that old Altus crank. Alright, so here we are. This is the product. Big ring, small ring, middle ring. This is a narrow range triple. The sizes of the chain rings are 35, 28, 21. That's going to be relevant in a moment. The interface in uh, which I'm going to be using to mount it to a uh, to a crank is, as you can already note, correctly. No. Yes. It's going to be GXP and it's going to be installed precisely on this MPX11 crank. The big ring is going to be mounted to the crank, and the smaller rings are going to be screwed using these holes from the inside. Now, I am a little bit of a hypocrite because I am touting the benefits of a front derailleur, but however I am aiming for that one by aesthetic with a single ring, so I didn't punch through uh, these holes here because I simply want to have simply a simple ring without the inner rings visible. Now I am also going to be blacking out uh, the front derailleur I'm going to be using. Uh, the rings are going to be installed on my uh, on my Enduro Freeride being silly bike and they are made out of 7075 T6 aluminum. As I mentioned before, uh, the sizes are 35, 28, 21 and that's not a coincidence because uh, the largest common divisor of all these three sizes is 7. If you count these holes here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There are 7 of them and in each there is going to be a pin made out of... Is it going to focus? Please focus. There you go, which is going to be made out of this conical screw, which is going to be inserted here. And it's going to be a chain raising pin or chain pickup pin. And there's going to be seven of these on each of the least resistant path for the chain to go from one ring to another. And the same pattern is going to be here, from this ring to this ring and from the small ring to the middle ring. So the sizes are not random. All three chain rings are going to create a single unit which is held together by screws, stainless steel M5. And there's going to be seven of them because, well, that's the logical choice for the method, to be honest. And I hope that uh, seven M5 screws are going to be enough to hold yours truly, or hold the chain rings to be usable by yours truly. Now, since they are made of 7075, 5 millimeters, this is really a resilient material, so that shouldn't be an issue. But I still need to punch the holes through on all of the chain rings. You can see there are five which are marked, or seven which are marked, but they aren't really through yet. And on this chain ring, I'm going to create a thread in each of these holes so the screws have some thread to thread into, obviously. So, what do I need to do on each of the chain rings in order to finish everything and get something usable? On each of them I need to debar anything because my programming isn't great and 
also isn't terrible, it could have been worse. It certainly have been worse on some of the things I made. Anyway, I need to debar anything and smooth everything because some of the cuts aren't really clean. Then I need to punch every hole which there is, which uh, needs to be punched through, so these seven and uh, the pins. I need to thread uh, these holes in order to keep the chain ring struggling to keep everything together. Then I need to press in the pins and I'm done with this one. Oh, I think I'm also going to paint it. No, I'm not really done with this one. Once everything is done, I need to add a camphor to uh, this particular part of a tooth here because that's an edge on which a chain, when it, when it disengages the, the chain rings and goes to a smaller one, it might, might get hung on uh, this particular edge and you need to camphor it to prevent this from happening. On the middle ring I need to do pretty much the same thing except I just need to drill this through because, well, no thread is necessary on this side. And on the smallest ring it's actually the easiest job because all I need to do is debar anything and punch these holes. No comforting of teeth is necessary, even here you can see that the shape of the teeth is slightly different than on those chain rings. Anyway, let's get on with it because time is of the essence. And after much fuffery, we have finished. And by we, I mean I and all of my other personalities. I have omitted the stage where I was making suggestive movements with a piece of steel wool over a plate of metal, because I don't think that's kind of interesting, and certainly it's not the type of content I should be providing on this channel. Because the weather is kind of warm, I intend to complete one more stage, even though I initially wanted to complete it in the spring, and that is painting the thing, because I want this to be orange and these aren't going to be visible, so I'm not going to care about them at all. Cue in a few moments later clip. Now if you're wondering how lazy I am with this, I'm this lazy. This is the visible side, but so this is the only one I have painted. Anyway, I think it's time to put everything together more or less and see how it works. And there you go. So I think I should now install this to the bike, shouldn't I? So let's do just that. I wonder whether my head is going to be cut out in this shot. Anyway, look at this. It's glorious and I'm proud of myself. And now I'm going to show you how well it shifts. Just... There's always something. Uh, the screws I have here are protruding on the other side. The heads of the screws are protruding and they are resting against the ISCG mount. If there wasn't ISCG here, this would work. Unfortunately, there is an ISCG, so it doesn't. And now I need to find a workaround. And my workaround, most likely going to be... I'm going to drill through uh, the holes on the... Uh, big ring and the middle ring to six millimeters and I'm going to tap the small ring with a, uh, with an M6 thread and I'm going using I'm going to use these 60 millimeter I don't know whether it's going to auto focus these 16 millimeter bolts which by my napkin calculation should mean that uh, the middle ring is going to have nothing protruding on the inside and there should be enough clearance for, for the ISCG mount. Although, as I was playing with this, I have noticed that I might be... well, my uh, plants might be foiled by the fact that the smaller string, which you can't see, is going to be so far inboard that the front derailleur won't be able to shift uh, so far inwards and I won't be able to shift to the to the smaller string, even though I 
I bought a triple specific front derailleur so this might be a way out of this problem we'll see anyway for now I need to drill this into six millimeters and tap the thread on the smallest ring so let's get into this these are the screws I was talking about and no I can't file the heads because I tried and that doesn't give me enough clearance I need to have well, I need to have this pretty much flush. Nothing has to stick out, out of this because otherwise there's going to be interference. All right, after faffing with this a bit, I have it where I want it. So let's install this to the bike and see if it's actually going to work as I intended it to do. So here we are. I am now wondering how much in frame I'm going to be. I'm going to presuppose that I am perfectly framed and I'm going to continue with the video. I've been faffing with this for the last few days, trying to find a solution to a certain problem, because from the picture you see here, you can imagine that this was a astounding success, and I've got my compact triple on my freeride bike. Unfortunately, it's not as rosy as it seems. First of all, uh, for now, this gear is 21 by 19, almost one to one ratio, and it seems that it actually is working correctly. So let's shift to 28. Remember, this is a friction shifting. Once again, this works really well. And now let's go to the big ring. Also, everything is perfectly fine. Now, I have the full cassette range on the middle ring, I think. Yeah, I think I do. So, everything is going according to plan and unfortunately when I try to shift from the middle ring to the small ring nothing happens and this is the problem Stop. Uh, this is the problem I've been trying to address for the last few days and I unfortunately I think the time has come for me to take the L on the issue because it's not that important because I can, to a degree, range max the cassette, so get as much range, getting range from these seven gears as I could possibly get and have the issue resolved. But what's happening here? Uh, the problem is that uh, this derailleur doesn't swing into the frame as much as it needs to because my smallest ring is too much inward into the frame and unfortunately because this is direct mount and press fit I have pretty much no wiggle room in order to get uh, uh, the, the cage of the derailleur to move inwards as much as I need or try to find an older style narrower chain line uh, derailleur or try to something something from the road bike or something like that simply in order to fix this problem, I would need to either get a custom rear derailleur or rear front derailleur, so it would shift this, at least I would need a custom cage, or try to bend this into some different shape or something like that. Unfortunately, I'm only getting one gear out of this setup, at least in with this short cage here, and 29, 21 by 19 isn't as low as well, as it is tempting to well, justifiably low to get it. Either way, anyway, this is the end of this video because I'm done with puffing with this. All right, so this is the end of the video because I had enough of this and I'm not going to be spending more time on this bike as. Anyway, this is the end of this video, because it has taken me six... Alright, this is the end of this video, because it has already taken six weeks of my time, six weeks of visits into the workshop trying to get it done, and I am really done with this project. So what I'm going to do now, I don't know yet. My I initially wanted to just leave the 35, 28. Maybe I leave 35 and 21. I'll see. Anyway, I'm done with this. The, the most useful gears, so 35 and 28, are going to remain, I think. Why am I saying this again? Aha, uh -huh. all right. I'm mumbling again. 
Anyhow, anyway, I have lost my train of thought at least three times already, so this is the end of this video because I'm done with this project. I have spent six weeks or six weeks worth of workshop visits in order to get it done. In the meantime, I managed to destroy perfectly fine GPU from my computer. Anyway, uh, I'm done with this project. I think I'm going to... I either said this already or I'm going to say it now because that's the fifth take. Anyway, I'm going to remain with 3528 and I'm going to limit screw the smallest gear because I'm most likely not going to be using it. If I desire to have more gearing range, I can always try to get something from the cassette. And this is the end of this video because my back hurts and I need to stop. Sorry. However, I hope I'm going to see you on the next one, provided there's going to be a next one. See you.